Hey friends, it's Thursday, so you know what time it is. It is a time where I usually feature a wrestler that features on TNA Impact Wrestling or Ring of Honor Wrestling. Uh, but this week I'm going to go way back to, um, yeah, the uh, Ring of Honor legend who is currently still wrestling and possibly on his way to retirement. We're talking about Brian Danielson. You cannot mention Ring of Honor without talking about the GOAT, without talking about Brian Danielson. Uh, better known to a lot of fans by Daniel Bryan, his WWE moniker. But well before that, um, you know, he was a multi multiple time Ring of Honor champion and, you know, world renowned as a wrestling tactician and technician, so to speak. And now in his, you know, seemingly final run. As a full-time wrestler, he's making his name in um, AEW All Elite Wrestling um, as a member of the Blackpool Combat Club, along with Willa Yuta, Claudio Castagnoli, and John Moxley. Uh, so let's take a look at this guy. We're going to get him open, and uh, we'll first take a look at the box. All right, so what we have here is uh, from Series 5 of the unmatched collection. That's why we have the gray uh, box in here as opposed to the gold that is usually here with the um, uh, unrivaled, I believe. And in series five, we have Sammy Guevara, Sean Spears, which I have, Kenny Omega, I don't have this one. Red Velvet, one of the first, you know, one of the first ones I got uh, from this series. Darby Allen, I have one from uh, his first series, and we have Brian Danielson here. We have the fake uh, autograph here. I guess it's not fake, it's copied. Uh, but it doesn't really add any value to it. It's just a nice little touch. Um, what else? We have the window here with him doing a pose right here. Uh, Fist up pose. He did that. Um, we have two different sets of hands. So we have uh, some grappling hands and some fist. Two different heads, it looks like. One kind of frowning, one, you know, with an open mouth, maybe screaming or yelling. I'm gonna kick your fucking head in, as he likes to say. Let's get this guy open because I am not a mental and card collector. I want him out of the box. I'm gonna take pictures with him. I wanna get him moving around. So let's get it done. I do wish that um, the AEW figures from Jazzwear had. You know, packaging that would be easy to keep together and reuse. Uh, but, you know, we got what we got. Man, here we go. We got that head. It became a. Now, one thing I noticed about this figure compared to the other ones, and uh, we'll get to that a little bit later in the video comparison, but it is a sizable figure. I have two other. Brian Daniels, Brian Danielson, Daniel Brian figures, and just um, offhand, this is a lot bigger, bulkier, more musculature, and the haircut is of course this different. So uh, let's take a look at the articulation. It is standard um, AEW Jazz wears articulation. We have the head on the ball joint. And we have two different heads. One with a little ponytail on the back. Uh, and then one with the hair down. Along with, okay, yeah, this is definitely an angry shouting face. He probably is gonna say, I'm gonna kick your fucking head in with this expression. And he looks like he wants to. And this, this is him looking like that, but not actually saying the words. Let's see how easy the heads switch. I know I have trouble with some of these jazz wear head switches. They don't seem to want to go on once you do an initial switch and stay on. You really have to work them. But yeah, so far, so good. I mean, it's, it's on there snug. We get a full range of motion. Awesome. And then we have a uh, mirror going down to the arms. We have all the way around here, up 
and down, back and forth motion. Uh, we have a cut, front button bicep, so you get the side to side motion. Double joint and elbows, so you can touch all the way up to the shoulder with the hands. That is a vast improvement from the Dan Brian Danielson, Daniel Brian pictures I have in my collection right now. And uh, the wrist is pretty standard. Back and forth, round and round we go. Um, the torso is, again, your standard Jazz Wears AEW. We have the swivel on the upper torso. And we have, of course, the lower, lower torso bends. It also comes off easy, so if you have multiple Brian Danielsons, so you get to figure with the jeans, but you want this torso, boom, you can do a quick pop off, pop her back on, and we are ready to go. That is no fuss, no muss. Um, go down to the legs, ball joint here. Cut in the thigh, from side to side. Double jointed knees, and I love the small, mobile knee pad. If you've seen my unboxings before, you know that my nemesis, my pet peeve, are bulky, heavy knee pads that impede the articulation. But you look at this right here, the knee pad is fully on, and I mean, I'm almost touching this back here with the knee pad in the actual crease of the knee. And so I would like to see more of this type of knee pad here. Uh, it's thinner material. If you look here and you have a lot of space in between the two sides here so you can, you're not hindering that movement hardly anything. And you can slide it down if you so choose as well. So yeah, A plus jazz wears on a knee pad. These are my favorite by far uh, compared to any Mattel or uh, Jack's figures I've seen. Uh, and then we have so we've got that double knees, calf rotates, and uh, we have a ball tight joint on the foot. And so there we go, that's the figure. I mean, it looks like him. Um, you know, it's pretty bulky here, but I really like it. I like the facial expression. Um, I like the multiple heads. I'm gonna get back on this other head real quick. Definitely prefer the one that it comes with. There we go. And so we have our AEW Chaz Bears action figure. ready for action. So now let's compare him to other figures. So uh, we have his, one of his last figures from WWE, the Daniel Bryan uh, figure from Mattel. Uh, the first thing you notice right off is that there is a huge disparity in size. I am on the level platform, legs are about equally bent. I mean, if you go legs straight up and down, you still have, you know, about a half a head, almost full head of a dis you know, distance between the two. So, you know, I had supposed that this figure was bigger just on the eye test initially. But when you put them side to side, back to back, it becomes, you know, very clear. Um, as far as which one is more accurate, I mean, I don't know. Are you working with a six inch shell here and a six and a half inch shell here? I'm not sure. I can say that in the past, Jazzwares has been inconsistent with uh, scaling. Um, the first Dustin Rose that they put out that I have um, is comparable to the Undertaker or Kane as far as I. Um, just looks like a towering monster, and um, you want to talk about some of the earlier female figures. Riho, the first woman champion, her action figure towers over everything else that they've done. So if I was to hazard a guess of what is more uh, photo accurate as far as the logos, I would go with Mattel, but I do prefer, uh, because of the articulation, and the versatility that's going to give you in the ring, I prefer the jazz wears. Um, 
because because of the double joints here that you have in the elbows. And uh, this was made, you know, before WWE started putting double joints on the elites. At this time, they were only doing double joints on the um, what is that called? Ultimate Ultimate Editions. Uh, those that figures that have the um, articulation and a whole lot of accessories at the $30 price point at the time. But now, Mattel is putting double joints on all of the elbows. So that is a nice change. And another change, too, is the torso. We have, you know, the rocker back and forth on the Mattel. And we have the swivel on the jazz wares. And, yeah. As far as the gear, is really not too much comparable. This is the Seattle Seahawks inspired gear from WWE. And this is, you know, more standard. You would see them wear this in WWE and AEW. Um, but I mean, you know, the Apple Orange is comparison there, but I say they're both, you know, photo accurate, you know, to the real person. And now it's going to way back machine too. Brian Danielson, the American Dragon. And if we look here, compare, yeah, uh, the Mattel figures, even though it's two different time periods, the uh, height seems to be, you know, consistent with Mattel. We have the cool jacket here with American on this arm and Dragon on this arm and we have the robe with the hood, the American Dragon logo on the back. And let's get the robe off to get a better look at this old school Ring of Honor time period. Um, Brian Anderson. Now this was put out by the WWE. Um, and so it is a Mattel action figure. The articulation is identical to the Brian Daniels, Brian Daniels, Brian da Daniel Bryan figure. And, um, you know, as far as the trunks go, we have that consistent maroon that he is, has always been his trademark in the trunks and the knee pads. Uh, we have the boots with the kick pads. Uh, the kick pad, actually, I would say is better realized on the Mattel action figures. You can actually see that there's some texture here separating the kick pad from the rest of the boot. And so I would give Mattel that. And you have a double joint in the knee, but it is hindered slightly by the knee pad. Bulk here, we don't have that cut out in the back of the knee pad to give it a little bit more motion there. And it's not as mobile. You really have to work this thing in order to get some mobility out of it. But, uh, yeah, it's a different, you know, I would say these figures are probably close to 20 years apart. But, uh, you can tell that it's the same guy. You know, this one's a little bit more grizzled in experience. And this is the young copy, uh, Brian Danielson. Um, uh, yeah, he had the short hair, kind of nondescript. He did wear a beard, um, I think primarily in his Japan run. Uh, back in those days, but um, you know, when he got back to America, I think you know he's like, yeah, I'm going with the clean cut thing again, and I uh, kind of wore that into his look into WWE. Um, but I really, really do enjoy. I mean, this uh, yeah, Jazz wears AEW Brian Danielson. I mean, if there is a strike against it, it would be the scale. But even with that, I prefer this for two reasons. One, the double jointed elbows. Two, the knee pads. The knee pads on this Jazz Wears action figure, I think, you know, that's something that should be done throughout action figure. You know, I know, I know this video ain't gonna get no traction. But if anybody tangentially connected to Jazz Wears or Mattel sees this video, please, more of these knee pads with the big cutout, softer material, so we can enjoy 
that motion there. So that has been my unboxing and review of the AEW Brian Danielson action figure. I think this is a solid B, B plus action figure uh, from the appearance to, uh, you know, the gear, especially the articulation. This gets a very high grade and we're going to be able to do a lot of things. You know, when I was posing before with this, you know, we couldn't get the high knee going. We couldn't do the thing where, you know, he gets a hold of the arm and, you know, stops in the face. We couldn't do a lot of his, you know, submission holds because the hands, you know, couldn't even touch. And so I think we're going to have a lot of fun uh, with this guy and uh, see what I can get. See if I can get out of this guy as far as photography goes. And so I am really excited more than most to get this guy in the ring because, you know, there are all types of professional wrestling and they all have their um, high points and their, you know, I wouldn't even say negative points, but people have a preference, you know, of what they see. And I enjoy the high flying. I enjoy the powerhouses. You know, and I even enjoy the WWE style, which is, you know, a lot of punch, kick, big move type wrestling. But when I sit down and watch wrestling, I like seeing simulated actual wrestling. I like seeing guys going for holds, counters, submissions, getting in there, tying it up, making it look like something you may see on the college mat, but more exaggerated. And that is one thing that he and the rest of the Blackpool Combat Club bring to the table is, um, you know, that kind of British world sport catch style of us. And while we are talking about the Blackpool Combat Club, let's bring out his cohort here. The former Ring of Honor Pure Champion, Willard Yuta. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you compare this to a, another Ring of Honor figure. I mean, it goes up nicely with Willard Yoda, who is not a big guy at all, but he is slightly taller than Brian Danielson. So I think that they may be using a different scale than Mattel. Anyway, you guys be easy. Tell me what you think of this action figure. I got mine at ringsidecollectibles.com. Um, you know, for um, the stuff you can't get in store, um, you know, they have, they have a lot of great deals, and you can even save money like me. I'm not a high end collector, and they have, you know, you know, a section for damage boxes. Um, well, that's where I get a lot of my ringside but collectible figures from, but you know, and they are very, very uh, courteous with customer service. You know, they want to make sure they get you your stuff safely, promptly, and securely. And if you have any issues whatsoever, they're very easy to hold up. So when you got you guys be easy. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. Until then, keep buying them figs. I am out.